Imagine a city where your Uber has no driver. I learned there's a major city in the United States that has self-driving cars all over the roads. Yeah, you heard me right. The cars are driving themselves. And no, they haven't gotten their licenses from Skynet yet. These cars are controlled by artificial intelligence and roam freely over hundreds of square miles. These AI drivers are on city streets traveling among regular folks, driving to wherever they're headed in their daily lives. Can you guess that city? I'll reveal it shortly, and then I want to visit it and show you firsthand what's happening. In early 2024, there were 225 square miles of the city with autonomous vehicles driving around with no human behind the wheel. I saw recently that it's been expanded by 40%. Now they cover 315 square miles. That's about a quarter the size of Rhode Island, but this is in a single metro area and it's happening 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. There are 700 cars, cars without a human driver on the roads. It's amazing and perhaps a bit crazy that this is happening. There are some of surprising and potentially concerning things I learned as I started investigating. How about you? Would you be willing to ride in a car without a human driver? Oh, yeah. No, I'm a little old. Um, sure. It sounds like science fiction, like something right out of the future. I was shocked to learn that you can come to the city, open an app on your phone, and call a ride with one of these cars, just like Uber or Lyft. Only instead of a stranger driving, there's no one in the driver's seat. Nothing could go wrong with that, right? I'm on a mission to learn all about self-driving vehicles and want to take you along for the ride. The company doing this is called Waymo. Have you heard of them before? It sounds totally futuristic to have AI as your taxi driver, but is it safe? Has anything gone wrong? Spoiler alert, yeah, things have gone wrong. I mean, seriously, computer problems happen sometimes. We've all had a problem with our phone. Maybe it froze up or something. Or perhaps you've seen that blue screen of death that comes on your computer if you're using Windows. With AI behind the wheel, that can get deadly. In 2018, a self-driving Uber test vehicle ran over a lady on a Sunday night, reportedly the first death from self-driving cars. And we've all heard of people being killed from car accidents, but have you ever wondered who was the first? For that, it seems we need to go back to 1896 and meet Bridget Driscoll of Great Britain. At age 44, she was in London at a festival when the driver of a demonstration automobile hit her at approximately, get this, four miles an hour, the maximum speed of the early vehicle. And a witness described the vehicle as being driven at a reckless pace imagine their faces to see a modern day freeway. In a less serious situation, here's a reporter's experience trying to get the car to drop her off at the correct location. This is the wrong location. Even Waymo's customer service was unable to change the computer's mind, which just kept returning to the same wrong location after being directed to try again. I wish I could talk to the driver. In a more recent news report, there was some kind of software glitch with an entire parking lot of Waymo vehicles honking at each other. Kind of funny except for the people who live on the apartments surrounding that parking lot. Now, all that said, don't mistake me. I'm not doom and gloom. Things go wrong, but there's been so much more going right. It would seem so since Waymo keeps expanding their AI-driven cars to cover more and more areas of the city. Before I get to that though, there's a lot of technology behind this. In case you missed my last video that goes into depth about the technology powering these vehicles, Here's a 20 second summary. They have lots of tech systems, including cameras, LIDAR, and radar sensors. Driving automation standards range from level zero to five, and Waymo is at level four. Elon Musk has been in the news a lot, and I'm not talking about politics here, but rather for Tesla. He's been talking about self-driving cars and turning privately owned Teslas into money-making robo-taxis while the owner is at work or asleep. But Waymo is actually at a higher level of autonomous driving right now than Tesla. Be sure you watch my last video to learn more, including which company beat Tesla to be the first to sell a fully autonomous vehicle available for purchase by the public. Waymo is reportedly the world's most experienced driver. Really? Let's get to that in a moment. But first, what are these cars? Well. They're fully electric vehicles built on the Jaguar iPACE platform. And Waymo just announced their next generation vehicle. I'm not even sure if it's on the road yet. It's a roomier vehicle built by a subsidiary of Volvo in China that you've never heard of. Geely, I think it's pronounced. It'll seat five people more comfortably than the current Waymo vehicles. Drop a comment below if you'd like to see one of these up close. Maybe I'll find a way to try one in a future video if there's enough interest. My last video talked about the sensors outside the car. But what about inside the car? Guess what? There are cameras watching your activity inside the car and microphones 
in the car listening. That might sound a bit creepy, but let's be serious. In the world we live in now, there are cameras all over the world that record us every day. Buildings, doorbells, other vehicles, construction sites, stores. Waymo reports the cameras are always on for safety when you're in the vehicle. But the microphones are turned off unless you need to talk to customer service. So sing to your heart's content. We may use interior cameras, check on riders, improve our products and more. But our microphones are only on when you're connected to rider support. So sing your heart out. We can't hear you. Speaking of customer service, they're there to help if you have questions. Are these things safe? Like, do you guys get accidents in them much? Um, actually, Waymo is uh, prioritizing uh, riders' uh, safety. So we are monitoring uh, after trip. And they're there to give warnings, like if you forget to buckle up. I just want to remind everyone to uh, wear the seat belts. The Waymo customer support even tries to talk to Waymo driverless vehicles if they're not sure what's happening, like this car is completely empty. I thought seeing any rider inside the vehicle, I'll go ahead and disconnect. Waymo is clearly big on safety with all the sensors, customer service, and ways to ensure safety while driving. I wonder what happens if a passenger causes problems, like they never try to turn off the vehicle when it's driving. <laughs> Please do not touch driving controls. But let's not forget, we're talking about a car driven entirely by artificial intelligence. Just how good can it be? I mean, it's driving all over the town with real people, real dynamics. You got construction, you got kids on the side of the road, something that runs in front of it, other drivers not paying attention. Well, Waymo claims on their website that the Waymo driver, yeah, that seems to be the name for this Waymo AI. I mean, someone tell me, don't we have Siri, Alexa, Hey Google, and probably lots of other named AI services. Is Waymo driver really what we want to call this AI? Waymo claims it's the most experienced driver in the world. Really? What does that even mean? And how does this relate to the city being taken over by AI driven cars? So why does Waymo claim to be the most experienced driver in the world? Well, they report that Waymo driver has over 25 million miles driven without human being behind the wheel. That's a lot of miles. And they talk about simulated driving of 20 billion miles, that's billion with a B, in computer driving simulations and 40,000 different safety test scenarios. Waymo reports they're now giving 150,000 rides every week in their vehicles. Holy smokes, that's a lot of miles and that's a lot of rides. I don't know about you, but I'm impressed with the amount of driving that's been done. Where did Waymo even come from? Well, Waymo was born as a moonshot idea within Google, and I know you've heard of Google. It was part of their secretive and innovative Google X lab back in 2009. Back then, the idea of cars driving themselves was something of pure science fiction, but Google had a vision, make the road safer and transportation more accessible. In 2010, just a year after its inception, the project put its first car on the public roads in California. It was a modified, get this, Toyota Prius, Perfect for California, right? Equipped with cameras, sensors, a spinning LiDAR on top. The goal? See if the tech could even handle real world driving. Fast forward to 2014, Waymo made its debut in San Francisco, a city full of chaotic streets and steep hills. That was the ultimate testing ground for an autonomous vehicle. San Francisco presented challenges like bustling intersections, erratic drivers, foggy conditions, a real crucible for Waymo's technology. But it wasn't just California. By 2017, Waymo shifted gears into Metro, Phoenix, Arizona. Why Phoenix? The wide roads, predictable weather, supportive regulations made it the perfect sandbox for refining their self-driving systems. That year, Waymo launched the world's first public trial of autonomous rides, giving ordinary people the chance to experience driverless cars firsthand. Fast forward to October 2020, Waymo is fully driverless in about 50 square miles of Metro Phoenix, offering rides with no one behind the wheel. It was a historic milestone for the company and for the future of transportation. Just like that, Waymo is underway with their domination, Phoenix, Arizona, adding more and more areas where AI-driven vehicles roam free among regular drivers on regular city streets. The AI cars roaming Phoenix have continued expanding beyond the original 50 square miles. In 2022, the service now included dropping off and picking up passengers at Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, the 14th busiest airport in the United States. Then, in 2023, the Waymo coverage zone reached 180 square miles. And by early 2024, there were 225 square miles of this city covered by Waymo. Fast forward to the summer of 2024, and the driverless cars have taken over 315 square miles of Phoenix. Did you know Metro Phoenix is among the top 10 largest cities in the United States? At 315 square miles, the takeover of AI-controlled vehicles is well underway. For reference, all of New York City 
covers almost the same amount of land at 305 square miles. Does anyone want to guess how many square miles the metro Phoenix area covers? It's 14,587 square miles. You know, all of a sudden that 315 comes into perspective. It's a lot of area, but it's just over 2% of all of Phoenix. But hey, taking over the world has to start somewhere, right? That takeover is just beginning. Imagine this tech in every city, in your city or town. What would you think? Would you ride? Drop a comment down below. Guess what? Waymo keeps expanding. They started on the roads at San Francisco in 2010. Up until last year, riding in San Fran was only by invitation. Then come June of 2024, they announced anyone can ride by signing up on the app. In November of 2024, Waymo opened up in Los Angeles, covering about 80 square miles. Looking ahead, they're hinting they'll be opening in Austin, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia, and Miami, Florida next. If you live in one of those areas, drop a comment. Have you seen Waymo driving around? Maybe they're doing some testing. Heck, maybe they're in the car next to you. In the meantime, I'm gonna go try riding in one of these Waymos in Phoenix with that largest AI-driven ride hailing service in the world. So stick around and subscribe. I wanna take you along for the ride. Just about to miss my flight. Oh, they changed the gate.